This sideboard had been waiting for its makeover for about four years. I found it in my husband's garage when we started living together. I mean, I started living with him. He had no choice because I had no other place to go here in Canada. Then we moved twice. The sideboard was buried. And finally, hi everybody, welcome to another makeover. The sideboard was in pretty rough shape. It was made out of chipboard covered with walnut veneer. The veneer itself wasn't damaged, almost. But the whole frame was a little bit crooked, the drawers didn't slide very well, the edges of the doors were swollen, and the worst part, it had intense musty smell. I think it's probably one of the reasons why I kept it in my stash for so long. I was hoping that the smell would disappear, didn't happen. The legs were made out of solid walnut, and the whole sideboard looked like it was high-end piece of furniture at one time, but the top was covered with laminate. Surprise! Initially, I had the different plan for this piece. I wanted to cover the top with walnut veneer, and I even bought one. But it never meant to happen, because like I told you in my previous video, I ordered a wood bleach, and I never received it, so I decided to make my own one. And by the time I started working with this sideboard, I already had all ingredients for the bleach. And if some of you can hold on on things like that, good for you, but I can't. I'm not a patient person, I was so excited and I had to try the bleach right away. And I knew that if I bleached this old walnut veneer and the new veneer I just bought, I wouldn't have the same result. Anyways, I wasn't really sure if I would be able to pull this dresser out to refinish it properly, so I decided to use it for the experiment. First of all, I needed to disassemble the sideboard as much as it was possible. This is how far I went with disassembling the piece, because besides the screws, the bottom part was glued to the sides pretty good, and the side, the chipboard started breaking. I addressed this break using some epoxy glue, but unfortunately I can't find the footage of it. Because of that musty smell, I needed to clean the sideboard inside and out. I was hoping that an order killer I got from Amazon would help me to get rid of the smell. <laughs> There was one drawer where the veneer had chipped off at the edge and it wouldn't be a big problem but the veneer on this sideboard was pretty thick i didn't have the same thickness of the veneer i had chipped veneer from my other projects from the older pieces but on this sideboard the veneer was like way thicker that's why i had to make the same patch twice first i put some sub veneer and i left it to dry and then i applied the patch of the walnut veneer once the glue dried, I sanded patched area and it wasn't a perfect fit, but it was pretty good, good enough. Both doors had water damage. One side of each door was swollen. There was not much I could do to fix it, but I could prevent the edge from crumbling further. I mixed some epoxy glue, applied it to the swollen edges, let it soak in a bit, and then I clamped it to bond the chips together. And now let the fun part begin. Finally, I'm making my homemade wood bleach. After spending quite some time on internet, I figured that the two-part wood bleach that was never sent to me, and yes, I'm a bit offended by that fact. So that bleach is a part one sodium hydroxide and 
part two, hydrogen peroxide. I want to pause here and say that I'm not encouraging you to repeat after me, oxide, because this experiment including working with some chemicals, I want you to do your own research and take your own risk. I'm going to show you what I did and I was doing it at my own risk. Sodium hydroxide is also called the lye and you might know it as a product for cleaning the pipes. When I was looking for it on Amazon, it was pretty pricey. This one I got from Home Depot and I paid like $6 or something. It's very important if you buy stuff like that to make sure that it's 100% lye. So for the part A, you need to make a solution of sodium hydroxide. According to the information I found, to make this solution, you need one ounce of sodium hydroxide to one cup of water. I am from Europe where we weighed all the ingredients so it was a little bit confusing to me do I go by weight or I go by measuring cap because it's going to be a totally different amount of lye. But since I'm in Canada in North America so I did it North American way using measuring cap. Here is what I learned about the mixing process. First of all it's better to take a glass container and never take metal. In this jar I have 2 cups of water but I didn't add all lye right away. First I added 1 ounce and it reacted with water immediately. The water in there and the jar itself started warming up in like 15 seconds. So I set it aside and let it to cool down before adding the next portion of lye. Once the solution was cold enough, I was able to touch the jar with my bare hands. I added 1 more ounce of sodium hydroxide. And again it warmed up pretty fast so I left it to chill. I waited for about one hour and finally I got to try the part A. I applied it to the door fronts and to the legs. The rest of the sideboard I was going to paint. And I was so surprised how this solution was changing the color of this walnut veneer to like very very dark. And I was like it's supposed to be opposite. It's supposed to lighten it up. Anyways I left it for about 30 minutes and came back with the part 2 which was hydrogen peroxide, but not just this store hydrogen peroxide, like 3 or 5%. To bleach the wood, you need something stronger, at least 25%. I got 30%, I believe, or 29%. Here in Alberta, it took me a while to figure that out, because usually concentrated hydrogen peroxide used as the uh, swimming pool cleaner. But we don't have lots of swimming pools here, and probably people use some different stuff because I couldn't find anything like that at the swimming pool stores or hot tub stores. But I found it at the hydroponic store. Once I was done with part 2, I left it to sit over the night and let it to do its job. Next morning it all looked pretty dry, but I knew that probably deep in the wood grain the reaction was still going. To deactivate hydrogen peroxide and to clean the surfaces, I mixed some water with vinegar in 1 to 1 ratio. And honestly, I didn't expect that. I was like, what's going on? I kept repeating in my head, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I couldn't believe that. The result was just awesome. Because I was filming in the shade and it was pretty sunny day, the video has high contrast and unfortunately I can't show you the real color of the wood. I did all adjustments to the video but still the color looks way darker than it was in reality. Don't worry, you'll see it in the final result. And here's the part I messed up. I decided to apply my bleach only to three sides of the legs because I needed to put them on the fourth side and I didn't want to mess it up. I don't know why I needed to put them on the fourth side. I could have just let them to dry standing up. But I thought if I do three sides and then in the morning I clean them and I'll do the fourth side, it's going to be fine. But it wasn't fine because I had so many drips and it looked awful. I had a little bit of hope that once I apply the bleach, those strips will blend in. I knew that I had a 1% chance, but you know, never lose hope. So I applied the bleach to one side of the legs and also to the doors. Because remember, I had the doors with the epoxy that was hardening. I totally forgot about them. Meanwhile, I flipped the dresser on its back and started working with the bottom part. I set it first with 180 degrees sandpaper and then, because it still had that musty smell, I applied Auto Killer Primer. That was the first time I worked with this primer and I can tell you that I am obsessed. This primer dries crystal clear, so it can be used for the restoration projects. Of course, you won't be able to apply any oil finish over it. You would have to go with polyurethane or lacquer, but oh well, if you have a smell, this is the best solution. 
it has an odor itself even once it's dried but in a couple of days this odor was gone One of the edges of this chipboard was kind of soft and crumbling, so to prevent it from further crumbling, I applied some CA glue to bond those wood chips together and then sprayed it with an actuator. This step was supposed to be done before I put all the screws back, but I forgot about it. To seal the primer, I used acrylic water-based polyurethane. I don't know if it was necessarily, but I just felt like it was, so I did it. And one thing about the screws I used, as you can see, I bought new screws, but the trick was I used bigger screws. If you remember, the sideboard was a bit crooked and it happened because the original screws, they didn't hold the bottom properly. The screws were loose in the existing holes, so that's why I needed the bigger ones. They were some type of rails inside of this section of the sideboard. They meant to hold the shelf, but they were broken anyways. I took them off and of course there were like holes from the screws. So I sanded it smooth and then I mixed some Bonda and I applied Bonda to those holes. A miracle didn't happen, the legs turned out awful. The drips didn't blend in and on top of it I had more drips from the last application. Anyways, I needed to sand the legs because with all that bleaching and washing I erased the wood grain, the wood fibers. I started doing it with 220 grit sandpaper and I noticed that the bleach didn't go as deep into the wood fibers as I thought it would and I was actually able to sand the bleached areas to sand down to the original color of the walnut. I had one leg that didn't look too bad and three other legs I sanded, not all the legs but this ugly look inside. And I reapplied the bleach again but this time I did it while the legs were standing up and this way I didn't have any drips. So if you're ever gonna do something like that, I'm here for you to make all the mistakes, don't repeat after me. The doors turned out way darker than the drawer fronts. I don't know why. Maybe I didn't apply the same amount of light solution. I don't know. So I reapplied the bleach to the doors again. But this time I decided to make another experiment. To one of the doors I applied part A, then I, I left it to soak in, and then I applied part B. And for the second door I mixed part A and part B together. Then I started working on the top and it was huge, heavy and very dirty. On the edges, the edge painting was coming off. First, I wanted to use some CA glue with an actuator to glue it back, but then I noticed that there was a lot of glue still left, and I decided to try one trick. To the edges I just cut, I was gonna apply a wooden edge painting, and to do that, you need to use the iron because it has already pre applied glue. The original edge bending was pretty thick and it was made out of plastic, and there was no guarantee that applying the iron would work. But oh well, I'm not losing anything, so why not to try? First, it seemed like it wasn't working, but I think it was just not enough heat. So I just kept going, and voila! Then I applied a wooden edge bending and I left it to cool down. And then I just came back to it and cut the excess with a sharp knife. The edges of the top were swollen a little bit, a couple of millimeters, but still you can see that chipboard above the edge bending. To cover it up, I used some Bonda. And once it's dried, I sanded the edges smooth and scuff sanded the whole top.
Next day, I washed my bleached doors and the legs with vinegar solution. And what I can tell that using two parts of the bleach separate, it gives more like rustic kind of look because it doesn't bleach it evenly. I can see that some areas were bleached a little bit more than the others. I think it's because uh, how much of the lye I applied. Probably the application wasn't even, but I did my best. And if you mix two parts together, the bleached area looks more even and consistent. But it felt like it didn't bleach as deep, I would say, as if you use it separate way. So I think next time I'll try to mix two parts of light solution with one part hydrogen peroxide. We'll see how it works. And finally, we got to the painting part. And I want to talk about this brand of the paint and say that I will never ever use it again. First of all, it was my bad actually. I didn't check the recording time and it turned out to be six hours. It says it could be four to six, but it's better to wait six. The paint itself wasn't too bad. I did a test. I applied it to the piece of wood and I left it for about a week. And then I did a scratch test with my fingernails. It didn't make any sense to do it with the nail or something like sharp because yeah, you can scrape off any paint with the sharp object. But with my fingernails and I put some figurines on top of it and you know, like imitate the real life, I couldn't scrape off the paint at all. And whatever scratches I left with my fingernails, uh, they were pretty much invisible. I just cleaned the surface with some water and they were like almost gone. This is where the good ends and the downsides begin. When I applied the first coat, the coverage seems to be pretty good. Then I left it to dry for six hours and I came back and I lightly sanded it with probably 320 degree sandpaper. And of course, with that sandpaper, I left like micro scratches on the surface, which is okay because I'm going to apply one more or maybe two more coats of the paint. Then I applied a second coat. And once it's dried, I noticed that I can see those micro scratches through the coat of the paint. This is just insane. This paint, see? This is my scaff sanding in between coats, like with a 300 grit sandpaper. And I didn't do much here. I was just like knocking down the bumps. And I applied the next coat of paint. And you can see through this, like pretty much everything. Every my uh, touch, every my touch, you can see it. With any other brand of furniture paint, I have never had this problem. So it was kind of like, what? So to cover up those micro scratches, and when I'm saying micro scratches, I mean it, they were like micro. So to cover them, I needed to apply two more coats of the paint without sanding, of course, because I would create more micro scratches and I would have to cover them up. I ended up applying six coats of the paint and it took me forever because of six hours of drying time. The other thing, when I pick the color sample of the paint at the store, I expect the paint to be the same color once it's dry. Not with this paint. It turns out lighter. And there were no mistakes with this paint because that was my second time using this paint. First time I used it for the custom piece, I did it for a client and the client picked the paint, not me. I'm not too sure if I'm going to be posting the video about that custom piece because there was a hell of a story. But anyways, my client brought me the color sample she picked and the can of paint. And somehow I managed to lose that color sample. I think I threw it in garbage while I was cleaning the garage. And when I applied the paint, I had this feeling that it turned out lighter, but I thought that I was delusional. When the client looked at the piece, she thought that yes, it turned out lighter than she expected, but she liked the color, so it was okay. Then I applied this paint, and this time I didn't lose the color sample, and it turned out way lighter than it was supposed to be. And this is actually what makes me mad, because the color is important. I picked this color because it was warm grayish beige color, and I thought it would be good with bleached walnut. But this color, it's not just turned out to be lighter, it looked way colder. And you are probably about to ask, why did you even buy this paint? This brand is the only brand that sold in our local hardware store, and I just didn't want to drive 20 kilometers one way just for the can of paint. Well, next time I'll drive. 
But at least there's something you can learn from my mistakes. I'm here for you to make them. Here is my awesome looking bleached walnut jar front. I bought first coat of the polyurethane and I kept repeating in my head, oh my gosh, this is just amazing, unbelievable, amazing, because I like the result so much. When I did my research and I watched some videos about bleaching walnut, I always saw the result and it was kind of looking yellowish, greenish. And at the very beginning, I doubted my decision, but I just love how it turned out. Once the first coat of poly dried, I did some blending and color matching. I used that resin paint from Furniture Repair Kit and I blended in the spot where I did some veneer repairs and also the edges where I sanded off the veneer. I mean, I actually didn't sand through the veneer. The veneer just wasn't there. Then I put the legs back together and as you can see, there's still some legs not looking pretty from the inside, but these parts, they are going to be attached to the body of the dresser so nobody would see it. Then I applied three coats of poly to the legs and to the drawer fronts and to the doors, but I didn't film it. And here's another disaster. I put the original hardware into vinegar because I wanted to clean it. I was supposed to leave it for about two hours, but it turned out that I left it for about five days. It turned out to be cast iron hardware and some of it was like damage. I don't know what word to use for this type of damage. It was just partially dissolved. Some of the handles there were okay and that damage it even added some character to the hardware. So I decided to keep it for now, just spray paint it with some gold paint or brass paint. Finally, it's time to assemble the piece and don't worry, the top was completely dried. It was drying for like four days probably and there's a soft pillows underneath it and there's towel so it's completely safe. And I'm going to be applying four more coats to the top once I flip the dresser on its legs. <laughs> The sideboard wasn't crooked anymore, but just in case to be on the safe side, I decided to put an additional leg in the middle. I cut the leg and the base for the leg off camera and centered them. Then I marked the center of the base and glued the legs using the epoxy glue. Once the epoxy hardened, I flipped the legs and I put some screws to keep the leg in place. The leg and the base were made out of poplar and I needed to match the color of my bleached walnut. And honestly, I didn't know what I was doing. I tried whatever I had in my stash, which wasn't a lot. I just relied on my intuition. First, I applied a very light coat of early American oil-based wood stain. I used very little of stain and I wiped it off immediately after I applied it. And then right away without letting the stain to dry, I applied my white hard wax oil. I bought this hard wax oil by accident at Home Depot. I meant to buy the clear one, but I bought the white. And I don't get to use it very often, but in this case, it was perfect. It blended with the stain and it gave the wood that light color I was looking for. It wasn't the perfect match to my bleached walnut, but it was really close. I set the leg aside for about 8 hours to let the oil to harden and meanwhile I put back the original handles and I hated it, they just didn't fit. And on top of it, because the handles spent 5 days in the vinegar, by accident of course, when I put the screws in there, the thread, it was just gone. So I had no other choice but to order new hardware from Amazon. Because it took me a while to refinish this sideboard, I hoped that that musty smell would disappear at least from the drawers over time. But guess what? It didn't happen. That means that I have to apply my auto killer primer to all the drawers and after that I have to seal it with the top coat. Next day my additional leg was ready to be attached. First I drilled four holes in the base for the screws. I marked the center of the sideboard and then I put the screws in the base. But I didn't screw them all the way in. I only screwed them in enough so that the sharp ends were sticking out a little. 
Then I place the leg in the center, aligning my marks on the base with the marks on the bottom. The screws left the marks and I was able to drill the holes in the bottom and attach the leg. And I was like, finally, I did something right. And then I flipped the dresser on the legs and um, ta-da! It looked like I screwed up the measurements, but I didn't want to disassemble the leg because I put the screws in this old chipboard and I didn't want to mess up with the holes. So I put the dresser on its back and I decided to sand the leg, then I tried to trim it and then I ended up disassembling it anyways. But I'm gonna skip here to the good part and say that I didn't screw up the measurements. I just didn't realize that in this part of my garage where I placed the sideboard on its legs, the floor was uneven. And when I moved the sideboard to the different spot, it turned out that I shortened the leg too much. But thankfully I had a piece of wood exactly the same size I needed and I just glued it to the leg, but unfortunately I did it off camera. For the new hardware I ordered, I needed to drill new holes because the distance was a little bit shorter. I didn't want to spend a lot of time trying to camouflage the existing holes, so I made sure that the poles I ordered were long enough to cover them. And yes, it is silver, or brushed nickel to be more precise. With this paint and wood combination, gold hardware just didn't fit. The bottoms of the drawers were in pretty good shape, but there were some scratches and chips of this laminate, so I decided to cover them with the contact paper. I don't usually do it often, I prefer to keep the bottoms as original as possible. I'd rather sand them and apply some top coat, than cover the imperfections with some contact paper. But it's just me, I like to make my life more complicated. Here I decided to try one trick I learned from internet, I think from uh, one of the shorts on YouTube. I used four sheets of office paper to get exact size of the bottom, and then I transferred this template on the contact paper. This way, in theory, I would have a perfect fit and I wouldn't have to trim the edges, which is always pain in the butt. And somehow it turned out that I had to cut the edges anyways. Oh, and by the way, this contact paper was the cheapest one I found on Amazon, and I'm obsessed with it. I think it was on sale, and the quality of this paper is awesome. And this is the end. We're done here. Let me remind you how this sideboard looked before. And here's the after. And I love it. Despite of the lighter color of the paint, despite of all my messed up, I think it turned out great. Now I am obsessed with this homemade wood bleach. I look forward to use it again and again. I hope you guys learned something from my experience and if you like this type of content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumb up, that would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video.